Looking for squirrelies out to the window, but probably not. Hi guys, it is another dark, cold, gloomy, gray day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization here on this wintry Monday morning, November 19, 2018. Here in uh, Garfield, Texas, so uh, the little dog and I need to run out and make $15 an hour in the global industrial economy while we still can. And before I head out to move some dirt around, I uh, just want to do what I do every day, and that's bring you the chronicle of <coughs> one of the many ways that... Uh, that the planet is collapsing today. <coughs> and I want to thank alert, li alert listener Hugh Gisole for sending me <coughs> this uh, today's Collapse Chronicle from Scientific Reports uh, from by Giovanni Strona and Corey Bradshaw, and I'm going to put the uh, link to this long um, study uh, that just came out in Scientific Reports. I encourage you to read the whole thing, but we're going to read the abstract and the introduction to this chronicle of the collapse. <coughs> and you can take it from here. I don't know what I have swallowed. I think I have a blueberry stuck in my throat. <clears throat> anyway, take it away. Scientific reports. Co-extinctions. Co-extinctions annihilate planetary life during extreme environmental change. So starting with the abstract. <clears throat> Climate change and human activity are dooming species at an un unprecedented rate via a plethora of direct and indirect, often synergic mechanisms. Among these primary extinctions driven by environmental change could be just the tip of an enormous extinction iceberg as our understanding of the importance of ecological interactions and in shaping ecosystem identity advances, it is becoming clearer how the disappearance of consumers following the depletion of their resources, a process known as co-extinction, is more likely the major driver of biodiversity loss Although the general relevance of co-extinctions is supported by a sound and robust theoretical background, the challenges in obtaining empirical information about ongoing and past co-extinction events complicate the assessment of their relative contributions to the rapid decline of species diversity even in well-known systems, let alone at the global scale. By subjecting a large set of virtual Earths to different trajectories of extreme environmental change, such as global heating and cooling, and by tracking species loss up to the complete annihilation of all life, either accounting or not for co-extinction processes, we show how ecological dependencies amplify the direct effects of environmental change on the collapse of planetary diversity by up to 10 times. Okay, from the abstract to the introduction. <clears throat> Being in the midst of the sixth mass extinction, it is fitting to quantify the relative contribution of different mechanisms driving catastrophic biodiversity loss. 
drivers directly related to anthropogenic modifications of the biosphere are apparent and well described habitat destruction, over exploitation, and biotic invasions. Similarly, the effects of environmental change, most of it being caused directly or indirectly by humans, of course, such as temperature rise, increased droughts, ocean acidification, etc., can be easily interpreted when the environmental conditions of a certain locality become incompatible with the tolerance limits of their inhabiting species. In many cases, in many cases, these will go locally extinct. Just like fish in an, in an aquarium with a broken thermostat. <clears throat> Yet, there are other more complicated mechanisms that can exacerbate species loss. In particular, it is becoming increasingly evident how biotic interactions, in addition to permitting the emergence and maintenance of diversity, also build up complex networks through which the loss of just one species can make more species disappear, a process known as co-extinction, and, and possibly bring entire systems to an unexpected sudden regime shift or even total collapse. In a simplified view, the idea of co-extinction reduces to the obvious conclusion that a consumer cannot survive without its resources. Because resource and consumer interactions in natural systems, such as food webs, are organized in various hierarchical levels of complexity known as trophic levels, it follows that the removal of resources could result in the cascading bottom-up extinctions of several higher-level consumers, such as, you know, they, you know, like if the insects collapse, the population of birds feeding on the insects that are no longer there will also collapse. Anyway. <clears throat> Several studies based on either simulated or real-world data suggest that we should expect most events of species loss to cause co-extinctions, as corroborated by the worrisome unnatural rate at which populations and species are now disappearing, and which goes far beyond what one would expect as a simple consequence of human endeavor. In fact, even the most resilient species will inevitably fall victim to the synergies among extinction drivers as extreme stresses drive biological communities to collapse. Furthermore, co-extinctions are often triggered well before the complete loss of one entire species so that even oscillations in the population size of a species could result in the local disappearance of other species depending on the first. This makes it difficult to be optimistic about the future of species diversity in the ongoing trajectory of global change, let alone in the case of additional external planetary scale catastrophes. One previous study contended this idea by using the remarkable tolerance 
of tardigrades to extreme temperatures, pressure, and radiation as a reference to calculate the likelihood of global sterilization on an Earth-like planet following different dramatic astrophysical events. The stunning conclusion of that study is that life on our planet has the potential to survive asteroid impacts supernova. <clears throat> Where was I? Uh, supernova and gamma ray burst. This ostensibly reassuring news highlights how some scientists still tend to disregard the role of co-extinction within collapsing communities in driving global biodiversity loss while focusing on individual species tolerance limits as the only criteria relevant to species survival in a changing world, ecologists know the optimism is not supported quantitatively, but can we estimate the magnitude of that bias? Here, in the study that they link this to. Here, we attempt to do this by combining real-world ecological and environmental data to generate several virtual Earths populated by interconnected species, interaction networks, where we allow species to move and adapt that we then subjected to extreme global environmental change by comparing scenarios of extinctions based only on species environmental tolerances with others accounting also for co-extinction, we show that neglecting to consider the cascading effect of biodiversity loss leads to a large overestimation of the robustness of planetary life to global change. Yes, the overestimation of the robustness of planetary life. There you go. That sums up the collapse of a planet as good as any term I've heard. So with that, uh, I, I'm going to put the link on here and highly suggest you go read this study for yourself. Uh, anyone trying to understand how this whole thing is coming down around us. Uh, excellent place to do your research. It does take a little bit of work to figure out the collapse of a planet. But with that, now that I'm done chronicling the collapse of a planet and global industrial civilization, I'm going to get out there on this cold, nasty day to make $15 an hour moving some dirt around a, uh, a house that I used to own and flipped the irony of living in the collapse. Bye, guys.